Hello, I'm Dr. Matthew Rasmussen. I'm going to describe in this series of slides the important aspects regarding a dependent variable. So a dependent variable, also considered a DV, this is the factor of an experiment that is measured by the researchers. So in other words, this is the factor that they look at at the end to see if it changed. Okay? This is actually the factor that they expect to change as a result of the independent variable. Now, there's going to be a further clarification of cause and effect in the next lecture. So if you wish to really understand the difference between independent variable and dependent variable and how those are incorporated into an experiment, uh, please tune into that series of slides. But for now, let's stay on a dependent variable. And a great working definition is that this is the factor that is measured. So here's an example. Researchers are interested in fluoride's ability at reducing cavities. Participants brushed with fluoride toothpaste or non-fluoride toothpaste, and the number of cavities after 10 weeks was measured. So we've already gone over the independent variable here, and we've already gone over the levels. So what is the dependent variable? Well, the dependent variable, again, is the object that is measured. And what is measured here? Well, it's the number of cavities. So it's the number of cavities after 10 weeks, so the number of cavities is the dependent variable. Again, the number of cavities depends on which condition was given to them whether they were in the fluoride condition or the non-fluoride condition. Another example. Joe, he was the guy who wanted to determine which pair of shoes will allow him to jump the highest. So again, he jumped with his Nikes, Reeboks, and Keds, and then he measured his jump height in inches. So what is the dependent variable here? Well, the dependent variable is the height of his jump, and that is measured in inches. So he could have measured it any which way he wanted to. He probably could get it in feet easy simple conversion. Um, you could do it in meters, right? Anything. But again, it's just simply the height of the jump. And again, that height of the jump in inches depends on the independent variable and those levels of that independent variable, the Nikes, the Reeboks, and Keds. That is going to likely alter the height of his jump. And again, that is what he measured, the height of the jump. Therefore, that's the dependent variable. Example number three. Please try this one for yourself. Cindy wants to begin to bake with an artificial sweetener. She asks people to rate their preference of the cake made with Splenda, Equal, or Sweet and Low. She also has the people rate the visual appeal of each cake. So again, pause it here if you need to. Please think of the dependent variable or the dependent variables. Yes, exactly. Just like that first one in the first couple lectures, there are two dependent variables here. The two dependent variables include the preference ratings. So the preference ratings would be like their taste, the, the, the appreciation that they have for the taste of the food, versus the visual appeal is how the cake actually looks. And you can see that those two things are two separate variables. One is on taste, one is on visual appeal. Both very important to a chef. So those two things she measured and those two things, those two factors, those two variables, those are the two dependent variables here. Here's another example of an experiment that has two dependent variables. So when you read through this and listen to this, please first determine the independent variable and how many levels the independent variable has, and then please determine the two dependent variables. So intelligence can be calculated in many different ways, through the WISC, the Stanford Binet, the CAS, the STAT, and even the popular SAT. In this case, intelligence will be assessed via the Stanford Binet and the STAT among individuals who are given 10 milligrams, 20 milligrams, or 30 milligrams of ginkgo for a period of 90 days. So please pause this and determine the IV and the DVs. So the independent variable here is what the researchers are manipulating. And what they're manipulating is the amount of ginkgo provided. Some individuals receive 10 milligrams, some receive 20, some receive 30. So the IV is amount of ginkgo provided, and the levels of this was 3, 10 milligrams, 20 milligrams, and 30 milligrams. Now, for the dependent variables, this includes two dependent variables, obviously. And it's not going to be 90 days here. Some individuals like to say, it's 90 days. Well, 90 days is not being measured. That's just part of the experiment. They don't care. The researchers know that it's going to go on for 90 days. They're not measuring anything about that 90 days. 
Once the experiment goes 90, that's completely fine. But that is not going to be the thing that changes. It's not going to be the factor that changes based off of the independent variable. The factor that is going to depend on the independent variable, what is going to be changed, is intelligence. And that's going to be measured via the Stanford Binet, as well as the STAT. So the dependent variable here is the intelligence rated on a Stanford Binet task, as well as the STAT. Now, some individuals may have said the WISC, uh, the CAS, amongst others. Those are ways to test intelligence. However, that is not the way that these researchers measured intelligence. So to wrap up, the dependent variable is the object in an experiment that is measured by the researchers. So to really draw the independent variable and the dependent variable together, this is going to be discussed in the next lecture. And this is labeled cause and effect, the synthesis of the IV and DV. And what this will do is this will make sure that the student, the individual who's listening to this, really understands what an independent variable does for an experiment and what a dependent variable does for an experiment and how those two variables, the IV and the DV, how they allow you to determine cause and effect and the importance of those. So if you understand the IV and DV, that's great, but you're really going to need to know for a deeper level of understanding uh, what importance these actually play in an experiment. So please tune into that. Thanks and have a great day.